Hey guys, welcome back to Home Build, and in this episode, we're gonna pull the engine out again. All right, well, last week you saw me playing around and getting that gearbox in, and uh, and it's really working really good. I am quite happy with how the whole mount is working. Um, all the gears work, the reverse lockout works. Um, as I said, the gear stick, I may not alter it. I can potentially bend that stick. The trouble is, is then I would have to disconnect the, uh, disassemble the whole bottom end because it's in a sort of a plastic housing and uh, before I heated it up because otherwise it would just melt the, uh, the plastic below it. And I have only a short window to be able to bend that gear stick underneath the uh, reverse lockout because it slides up and down the stick. I could, if it gets to it, um, basically remove all of that um, sort of uh, spring-loaded reverse lockout and put a, um, uh, cha change the whole stick, bend the whole thing back. Um, so I've got, you know, I've got plenty more space and bend it back, which will look more like an alpha stick. But then I'd have to do something else with the, the reverse lockout. I could put a, um, uh, basically like a little bar, spring-loaded bar in there. So there's a detent, so you just have to, you, you feel the force, you have to press it over to get in reverse rather than just randomly going to reverse when you're trying to go to first. So it can be done, but to be honest, at the moment, it's, it's at the length of my stretch to get it into first, but it's not... It's not too uncomfortable. The, I mean, the 911 is uh, is probably a similar sort of stretch, so it's 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 far from being terrible. Uh, okay, and just quickly before I uh, pull the engine, as you might have seen previously, you saw I set up my dry sump oil tank and I set up my oil cooler in the front and the lines from the oil cooler all the way through the um, the dry sump tank and back into the engine. But the actual feed coming out of the engine has been something that I've been playing with for a while, trying to work out how to adapt it. This is the uh, the standard tube that sort of bolts onto the side of the engine with this sort of big sort of banjo bolt uh, that's on this side here. Now, the issue I've had is that it is a very large, very um, rare thread to get. I think it's like a 30, 30 by 1.5 or something like that, big metric thread, and trying to get something to adapt to it. And then I was trying to work out um, looking at this going, okay, well, it's brass, maybe I can braze on a fitting, but I wasn't confident about my TIG brazing. And I, uh, I ended up taking it around to, uh, to Benny's. I had a whole thing ready to flare it and put a, uh, um, a fitting on it, but then I didn't have a flaring tool big enough. And Benny took one look at it and uh, noticed a couple of uh, rubbed through sections and realized that this is actually aluminum. So I was tearing my hair out for ages thinking this is brass and it's just gold anodized aluminium. So I've got a, uh, a weld on AN fitting that I'm going to weld onto this and then problem solved. Nice and easy, I can weld on aluminium, that's not a problem. So I weld the fitting on and then I can run the hose to the oil cooler and we're all good. After worrying about that for so long, um, it's really quite easy to, uh, to, to weld the aluminium. I'm happy, more than happy with that. Uh, that will do the job and uh, I can move on and now I can pull the engine out again. Yay! <laughs> Well, I have the engine sitting here out of the car, and as mm, those of you who followed my 911 build, I converted that, that to uh, electronic fuel injection, and there are several things you need to have on any engine to run, uh, to, to tell a computer to run EFI. And on the Ferrari engine, the, um, the factory crank angle sensor was actually on the flywheel, um, 
inside the gearbox, which obviously I no longer have a Ferrari flywheel, I no longer have that pickup. So I need to have some way to tell the computer where the crank is actually in its rotation and what, it, what it's actually up to. So what I'm gonna do on this, I went out and contacted Raceworks and uh, they sent me this, which I think this is a 60 minus two, two wheel. Basically what it is is there's, uh, there are 60 teeth around this, but you can see that there's a gap just here where there's a couple missing. So basically, um, there'll be a sensor on here that picks up where the tooth is and as the wheel spins around the sensor picks up every single tooth and they go ah there's the gap that's top dead center or that's 20 degrees before top dead center or whatever that can all be programmed in it doesn't really matter where that is as it's just a reference point so the computer knows exactly what's happening so the thing is is now i need to work out a way to make this sort of go onto the engine and I'm going to put it onto this uh, factory balancer. And to do that, I've got to make it fit somehow. And because this has got a big recess in here, um, putting it on the front is also going to be a pain because if you ever have to change a belt, like it breaks on the side of the road and you need to replace a belt. So I want to put it in behind on the back side of this balancer, which is going to mean doing a little bit of uh, modification to the balancer and a modification to this. So first things first, let's get the balancer off and I'll show you what my idea is and let's see if it'll work. All right, so we are back over at the lathe, and um, so what I need to do now is I've got the uh, balancer off of the Ferrari engine, and it's got this outer lip for the smaller of the belts, or the smaller pulley on the uh, balancer. I am no longer using this, so I'm going to take at least the, uh, the very lip off of this to start with, so that I can then try and machine down the center of this wheel to try and get it so that it will uh, go over the top and uh, and sit nicely into this uh, onto the back of this balancer. All right, now I've got my uh, dial indicator. I've got this pretty close, but it's still not perfect. So I'm not sure how well the uh, it's picking it up there, but you can see that the uh, the dial indicator is still moving and I want to get this so it's basically not moving at all or pretty close to not moving. And that means that it's perfectly centered because basically as this turns around, because it's not centered, the, um, the dial indicator is is measuring the uh, the edge and as it moves, it's obviously you know, moving in and out. So if I look at it, and that's about the highest it reads. So I wanna to go to this opposite side and loosen it just a smidge and then flip it over and tighten this side just a smidge. And that should hopefully, we'll see that was too much. So that, that blew it way out, which is why I'm using the four jaw chuck so that I can move the disc left, right, up and down to get it just right so that it's nice and centered in the chuck. It's perfectly centered before I start cutting out the bits that I don't need. All right, I now got it centered. So it's within about one one hundredth of a millimeter. So it is, uh, it's very well centered. I'm happy with that. So now I can move forward and start cutting out the center of this so that it will now fit onto my balancer. Well, that is a beautiful fit. So now I've made it so that it slips over the top of the uh, thing. There is zero movement. It's nice and solid. So that's uh, that's a good thing because you don't want these things out of balance. That's why it's known as a balancer. Um, and that's, that's a perfect fit on there now. So uh, now I have to look and see if I can work out a way to actually secure the, uh, if I can get it off, 
it's tight. Uh, the uh, if I, can, I need to work out a way to secure this degree wheel to the balancer. All right. Well, step one, I'm quite happy with. So I've got my degree wheel. It fits perfectly over my balancer. That is going to be a uh, a good addition. Now, the next thing that I need to look at is I need to say some way to secure this degree wheel to the balancer. And what I want to plan on doing is using some little M5 uh, cap head bolts. So these are um, little Allen bolts with some Loctite. I think they'll, they'll do the job nicely, but obviously you can't just randomly drill them in. Again, this needs to be balanced. And also there is not a lot of meat here to, uh, to drill the holes into. So basically I've worked out that this lip, this total, uh, the, the bigger lip here is about 15 mil wide. Uh, and uh, the outside part, it's about five to six mil down into the, uh, to, to where the Vs are. So really I wanna make a, my, my holes five mil from the base of this lip up and that will make a hole that will not interfere with the belt and um, uh, should give me enough to be able to bolt these on and space to clear the heads of the, the bolts so the heads can bolt in, make it all so that it all works. So that's the plan. Now to do that, uh, I need to mark a, uh, a line five mil in all the way around on this uh, degree wheel in exactly the spot I want. And I'm thinking I might do that again on the lathe and get this centered and uh, and then do just touch it with um, something on the lathe to, to mark out my five mil all the way around. So I've got a nice five mil gap so I can get my, uh, get my bolting radius correct. And I'm definitely not a machinist, but um, generally you don't want to take these things off once you've started. Um, that's one of the sort of big rules of machining is uh, trying to do all of your work. But obviously I have now flipped this around. I need to put the mark on the other side, so I had to take it off, which means recentering it all again. So let's, um, I'll keep the, uh, the four jaw chuck on here and uh, let's set it up for round two. Okay, so I marked my five mil line all the way around on the, uh, on the inside of this degree wheel. So I've got my basic spot and I've marked my initial spot, which I picked to be basically, um, I'm probably gonna look at putting this at bottom dead center, mostly just to offset the keyway um, and in some ways trying to get the sort of the, the closest balance I can get. Um, that's my theory anyway. Now to mark out even holes. Now that is something that is difficult, but um, I've gone back to um, something I remember from school was um, that if you have uh, the radius of a circle and you mark the radius around the edges of the circle, you'll get six even spaces. So I've just got some, um, I've just got my marker pen done a few spots. I've marked my starting point and now I measured my diameter, I put it in the calculator, halved it, so I'm using my calipers and I should be able to now go through and mark all six locations and if it goes back to zero in the center, I know I've done it correctly and then I've got my drilling spots. That's the theory. All right, so first one is in, that uh, that has centered it, and I'll leave that in now. I can go around and drill out the other two. I'm only gonna put three bolts in it. Three bolts should be plenty. Uh, once they're locked in there, that's not going anywhere. So uh, I'll drill out these two, tap them, and uh, lock tight it on, and we should be good to go. All right, that is all mounted up and uh, looking really good. It's, uh, I'm happy that it's nice and centered and uh, the, uh, the bolts are nice 
nice and tight. I haven't locked tighted them in yet because uh, I still may want to disassemble this. Just to be on the safe side, you should get these things balanced. And I'm not, sh I've, I've looked it up. I'm not sure where to get these balanced um, professionally, but uh, I have looked up and there is a way to balance this myself uh, and, uh, and get it pretty, pretty good. So to do that, what I need to do to start with is I need to get a shaft that will uh, that this can sit on that uh, will hang out either side so i'm going to have to get on the lathe again see if i can find a piece of stock that's close to the right size and machine it up so that i actually have a shaft that this can sit on and then i'll show you how i'm going to balance it All right, so what have I done here? So I made up a shaft that nicely fits into my uh, balancer assembly, and then I folded up a couple of pieces of sheet metal here. I wanted them, basically what you need is you need as little friction as possible. So um, you want a really thin edge. You can use the edge of like a um, hacksaw blade or something like that. And basically with a tight fit on this, what you do is um, with a, with a pulley, you basically want to get this thing to roll backwards and forwards. And if there is a high spot, it will sort of sit to the bottom of the um, uh, of the movement. So you you'll see it sort of stop, and then you can take some, you know, get the die grinder and take a little bit out of that side. Now this is far from a perfect situation, apart from far from a perfect solution, but. It really doesn't seem to be finding a heavy spot. It really seems to be a reasonably smooth flowing um, unit. I mean, is this ideal? No, but um, does it have to be amazing? I mean, this is gonna be spinning at 8,000 RPM, um, but uh, at this stage, that is looking pretty good. I am reasonably happy with that. I may see if I can get it balanced somewhere, if we know somewhere that will actually balance these things. Uh, let me know in the description. I, I might try and get that done. But um, as far as the, uh, the basic concept goes, I'm pretty happy. So it's time to get this off of here and see about fitting it back to the engine itself. Okay, so I put the crane back on. I did talk it up, but I'm gonna be taking it off again anyway, because I'm going to obviously replace the, uh, the cam belts and stuff before I put this engine in the car and actually run it. But for the time being, I just prefer to have it all on and exactly where it's gonna go. I had to clearance out this plastic housing a little bit to get it to fit, but that's uh, <clears throat> all fitting nicely now, so that's all good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is set up something to actually read the, uh, the notches on this crank trigger wheel. So um, as I said, I think this is 60 minus two, this uh, crank trigger wheel. And um, there are two main types of sensors that uh, sort of detect these, uh, these sort of things. And you can either get basically a Hall effect sensor or a reluctor. They both do a similar job I'm not an expert, but from my understanding, Hall effect sensors are much simpler to set up. They've got a, they, they give you a lot more leeway as far as how close they are and things like that, but they're not very good with heat. Whereas reluctors are very reliable, work well in hot situations, but um, you have to make sure you've got a, a nice, clear, um, close gap when you're actually using them. So in this case, I'm using a reluctor. Um, this is just a Bosch Reluctor I got from uh, Raceworks and they uh, actually supply a, uh, a Raceworks mount for it as well. So I have to now 
work out a place to mount this and I'm going to mount it down around the this side over here which is where I believe alternator power steering pump or something was uh, was mounted on there before which no longer is so I'm going to use that mount to uh, mount the sensor and uh, then we should have a an engine where we can actually measure the crank trigger. Okay, so as you can see here, I've made uh, my bracket up. This is and it got an adjustment slot in it that I uh, filed out and uh, so sort of drilled a few holes, cut through and filed out and uh, spaced out my adjuster so I can adjust the spacing of my reluctor from the degree wheel. And what I what I had to do is uh, it is out of 12 mil aluminium, which is overkill, is massive overkill, but it gave me a good, nice the right spacing from the block to the degree wheel so that this is all gonna sit in the right place. I've made up a couple more um, transfer punches. So if you hadn't seen these before, basically what these things are is I just took, um, in this case, M5 bolts. So I cut the head off, put it in a drill, and then ran the drill on um, a sanding belt and ran, rounded it to a point. So you get a nice central point so that uh, basically I can screw that by, by hand into the uh, the piece that I want to mount, and I can now sit this onto the uh, the aluminium exactly where I want it. Give it a tap with a hammer, and it'll leave the dents perfectly where I want them, nice and central, so that I can drill this out and mount this reluctor. So let's do that now and uh, get this mounted up so that it is perfectly ready to go and read our crank angle sensor. Well, that was a couple of days of quite satisfying work. I've uh, managed to mount my degree wheel and got my Reluctor all set up so that I can read it. So basically I can now uh, read the crank signal from my Ferrari engine. It's getting there. There's, that's, another, that's another big sort of uh, worry job off of, the, off of my mind. Quite happy with how it turned out. I'm quite happy with the, uh, the placement of everything and uh, yeah, it's really good, but I am definitely out of time, so I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 2008 saw the release of Alfa Romeo's new small hatchback, the Mito. Based on Fiat's small platform, the Mito got its name from Milan, where it was designed, and Torino, or Turin, where it was built. The Quadrifoglio Verdi featured a sprightly 1.4 litre four-cylinder turbo making 170 horsepower. Alfa Romeo built a concept GTA version of the car which they unveiled at the 2009 Geneva Motor Show. It was powered by a 1.8 litre turbocharged engine making 240 horsepower and it could go from 0 to 105 seconds flat. Unfortunately, that version never saw production but Alfa did make several special versions including one for Maserati. They built 100 Maserati versions which were distributed to Maserati dealers in Europe and they were based on the QV models and painted in a blue Oceano. And they were actually used as courtesy cars for Maserati service customers. Alright, I am very happy with the progress this week. That was something that I've been sort of putting off for a while. I was worried about how accurately I could do the, uh, the, the crank angle wheel and get it, degree wheel, get it onto the... Uh, um, onto the pulley, but I am very happy with that. I think it's uh, quite well balanced and it's in a good spot. I'm, uh, yeah, that that went much smoother than uh, than I was, uh, well, better than I expected anyway. Not often you say that. No, that 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 it's was good. Often. I was, I'm quite happy. Please like and subscribe if you haven't, and if you want to see the videos a day early, you can follow us on Patreon and you'll get to see them ad free as well. Yes, and follow me on Facebook and Instagram and Mrs. Jeff on Instagram as well. And we'll see you in the next one. Hey okay. guys. See you guys. It was powered by a 1.0 litre lap. <laughs> Fortunately, Alpha never put that. It's including one for Maserati. That was a bit weird. Unfortunately,
and they were used as courtesy customers. 